With humanoids creeping into every aspect of our lives, the topic of gender and robots is one that needs to be discussed. Development in Humanoid Robots Humanoid robots are professional service robots built to mimic human emotion and interaction. Like all service robots, they provide value by automating tasks in a way that leads to cost savings and productivity. Humanoid robots are a relatively new form of professional service robots. While long dreamt about, they're now starting to become commercially viable in a wide range of applications. Humanoid robots that utilize some of the most advanced technology are being created around the world. For example, humanoid robots are expected to be used in disaster sites that are unsafe for humans to enter. If a humanoid robot has the same body size as a human and can move in the same way, it can use the same protective clothing, tools, and vehicles designed for human use. Needless to say, the environment of the world is designed so that people can live and work. A major benefit of humanoid robots is that they can be used without having to significantly change these environments. Under the auspices of DARPA, Boston Dynamics developed a quadruped robot, Spot, and a humanoid robot, Atlas. After showing off its acrobatic parkour skills on YouTube, Atlas became incredibly well-known. The continuous developments and advancements in robotics have opened ways for humanoids that are rapidly increasing and have gained significant attention in recent years. Many big names have developed humanoids and robots for daily use. Samsung unveiled a fleet of advanced products where there is a humanoid robot designed specifically for single-family households named Peebo. The robot uses interaction technology and is based on an emotional analysis of facial expressions. It also contemplates the contents of conversations and gives appropriate responses with sayings, music, and dance. To this robot, users can add new features and content, which can then be downloaded from its robot application store. Gender and Robots Robots are the most powerful blank slate humans have ever created. A robot is a mirror held up not just to its creator, but to our whole species. What we make of the machine reflects what we are. That also means we have the very real opportunity to screw up robots by infusing them with exaggerated, overly simplified gender stereotypes. So maybe robots aren't simply mirrored. Perhaps the biggest issue is gender. How gender biases manifest in the design of voice assistants is well-worn territory. Research shows that users tend to like a male voice when an authoritative presence is needed and a female voice when receiving helpful guidance. Scientists are just beginning to consider how these gender biases materialize in physical robots. Robots don't have genders. They're metal and plastic and silicon and filled with ones and zeros. Gender is a complicated mix of biology, which robots don't have, and how we feel about that biology, feelings that robots also lack. Yet, we are already finding ways to mirror our social problems in our robots. One study, for instance, found that participants judged a robot program to perform security work as more masculine, while they judged the same robot instead programmed for guidance to be more feminine, echoing the gender preferences towards voice assistants. The danger is that robot makers, consciously or not, may exploit gender stereotypes to try to make their machines more effective, designing a receptionist robot to be more feminine and therefore more welcoming, or a security robot to be more broad-shouldered and therefore more authoritative. It doesn't have to be this way. Robots could just as easily be used to confront and begin changing those stereotypes. With human-like robots, even subtle design choices can telegraph gender. A study found that when shown images of humanoid robots, people consistently chose a particular pronoun to go along with them. They referred to a robot with a straight torso with a male pronoun almost 90% of the time, but robots with a more pronounced waist were deemed more feminine. Big shoulders, on the other hand, were classified as more masculine. The Exploitation of Genderizing Robots To design a gendered robot is, in a way, deception. Robots cannot have a gender in any meaningful sense. To impose a gender on a robot, either by the design of its outward appearance or programming some gender stereotypical behavior, cannot be for reasons other than deception, to make humans believe that the robot has a gender or gender-specific characteristics. When it comes to gender, we are all vulnerable. Whether we like it or not, we all react to gender cues. So whether deliberately designed to do so or not, a gender robot will trigger reactions that a non-gendered robot will not. The visible or implied gender of a robot may even have an impact on its effectiveness in a certain field, especially in sales. Designers won't always intentionally exploit gender stereotypes. A designer might, for example, want their home robot to look burly to telegraph that it's strong enough to lift you out of bed. It's about inspiring confidence. 
but size doesn't necessarily equal strength. Electric motors don't grow like a muscle when you exercise them. By decoupling the size and strength of robots, their builders have an opportunity to reinforce the machine's inhumanity, physiologically speaking. The problem is that even if a robot isn't gendered, and even if it doesn't look human or even animal, people will tend to want to gender it. For many robot makers, this kind of gendering helps infuse the machine with personality and therefore makes it easier for the consumer to form a bond. The other issue is that by building gendered robots, there is a huge danger of transferring one of the evils of human culture, sexism, into the artificial realm. By gendering and especially sexualizing robots, we surely objectify them. But how can you objectify an object? The problem is that a sexualized robot is no longer just an object because of what it represents. The routine objectification of women, or in some cases men, because of ubiquitous sexualized robots, will surely only deepen the already acute problem of the objectification of real women and girls. Given that gender is a social construct, then a society of robots existing alongside humans might invent gender for themselves. Perhaps nothing like male and female at all. Now that would be interesting. The Future of Gender and AI Amazon's Alexa is far from physically resembling a woman. After all, it's a tall plastic cylinder. Yet when asked about its gender, the system curiously responds it is female in character. A closer look at recent developments in artificial intelligence shows Alexa is the rule rather than the exception. From Apple Siri to Hanson Robotics humanoid robot Sophia, it seems that the future is female indeed, but not in the way people may think. Artificial intelligence and robotics may intend to free us from many human limitations, but it seems that gender stereotypes are not one of them. Some recent achievements in these fields feel like we're transporting back into the 1950s rather than into the future. In industries such as sports and weaponry, names and appearances of devices are usually either male or somewhat technical. A prominent example is Taekwon V, winner of the robot skiing competition at this year's Winter Olympics and named after a boy in a popular manga comic. However, in the service and carrying industries, names and appearances of devices are almost exclusively female. These mostly Caucasian females are exceptionally attractive. Sophia was apparently modeled after actress Audrey Hepburn. She also looks remarkably similar to the humanoid robot Ava from the movie Ex Machina. Perhaps unsurprisingly then, many news outlets have declared her the hot robot. The emphasis again is on a woman's beauty. You don't need a degree in gender studies to understand the implications of these developments. In the current discussion about gender and identity, advances in artificial intelligence and robotics add another layer of complexity. Obviously, neither Sophia nor her companions are, in fact, real women. But how can we encourage young girls to strive for being doctors, politicians, or astronauts when they grow up surrounded by a female-looking service robot? That's all for today's video. See you next time.